Meanwhile, Musk's SpaceX company was trying for a second time to successfully launch its Starship rocket. Things started off well, but then ran into a bit of trouble. We have the thought. The uncrewed ship flew for the first time since April 20th. The flight ended after just a few minutes. The Starship is being built to hopefully someday send people to Mars for the very first time. For more on this, we're joined by Nicole Martellero, senior science reporter for CBC News. So, Nicole, we were watching this. I saw your big smile on your face. We heard the cheers and so much excitement. What happened? So, uh, you know, uh, SpaceX, as you mentioned, launched Starship back in April. It blew up. The two stages didn't separate. This time, they launched successfully, did not destroy the launch pad like they did the last time, <laughs> um, which is already a win. And uh, they actually got to stage separation. Unfortunately, after the booster stage with those 33 engines, uh, once those uh, they separated, a bunch of those uh, engines uh, kind of looks like they got damaged, and then it exploded. And then the second stage, that also got, almost got to orbit, but then they had to uh, initiate the self-destruct because obviously they only do that when it's, you know, off or out of orbit, like it's not on its path. And so they had to blow that up too. Yeah, and then we were hearing they lost the signal, not the landing that we were expecting to see in the Pacific just outside of Hawaii, but as you mentioned, still quite a success because they were able to progress past what the uh, first attempt was, which was short-lived as we were talking about that separation. They made it past that today. But what would this mean for the program? What's next? So SpaceX looks at this as a win. They really think that, you know, this is how they actually launch. They test by launching. And it sounds counterintuitive, but that's what they do. And so you can expect that SpaceX will launch again probably before, I would say before spring. I, I, it's a guess, but they've got rockets already lined up, ready to go. And I think that's what we're going to see. And it's amazing when you think what the potential is here in the future. We're talking about sending people to Mars, um, going to the moon. So what we're witnessing here, very exciting for those who are really following this, like yourself, um, because of this, uh, where it falls in the grand scheme of things, in this huge story when it comes to exploring space. Yeah, so what they're expecting is they... Um, the, a version of this is actually going to launch astronauts, well, not launch, sorry, land astronauts on the moon as part of NASA's Artemis III mission. So this is, you know, NASA's keeping a quick, a uh, really close eye on it. But ultimately, Musk wants to take humans to Mars, and that's his big-time goal. In the meantime, though, you're taking us to the skies with asteroids, <laughs> and one has been named after you. We touched on this briefly earlier this morning, but how cool is that? How did that happen? Yeah, my name was submitted um, by the Royal Astronaut Astronomical Society of Canada, along with uh, others. Uh, I'm a member of uh, the RASC, and it got accepted by the International Astronomical Union. So I'm, I'm chuffed. You know what? You're chuffed, and we think you're out of this world, Nicole. That's pretty <laughs> or amazing. Or from another planet, whichever. Or, you know, that's <laughs> certainly up for debate when it comes to myself. We can be in the same spaceship together. Thanks so much for breaking it down and for your insights. It's always so interesting and so cool to see just where technology is taking us. I know. I can't wait for the next one. Thanks so much. And that is Nicole, of course, our senior science uh, correspondent.